Andy Johnson, Minnesota State University. I am a professor of literacy instruction, been doing that for almost 30 years. We're going to talk today about a teacher professional development program called Letters and Minnesota State Senator Roger Chamberlain. And you should know up front that Letters is another boondoggle, a for-profit thing, another shiny thing, shiny new thing. And I've been in education long enough to see these shiny new things come and go. <clears throat> and this seems to be the newest shiny new thing. And when this shiny new thing loses its luster, it will be cast to the side and another shiny new thing will come around. This is seen as the answer for some problems that don't even exist. And people outside of education seem always to have the answers for teachers. Senator Chamberlain is approving an education bill to reverse what he calls Minnesota's declining reading scores. And that is inaccurate. Obviously, obviously some paid lobbyist has gotten to him and told him what to say and how to say it. Why is that? Well, first of all, there's not a decline in reading scores. There may be differences in arbitrarily defined categories, but comparing percentages in categories, they are not reporting test scores. You cannot compare categories from one year to another. They're not reporting test results. The test could change from year to year. Who defined the categories? And going to the MDE website, they even say you cannot use these for comparison. Arbitrarily defined categories exceeds, meets, partially meets, does not meet. I have no idea, but you can't use this as a comparison, which some are trying to do. Now, Senator Chamberlain has says, said this. Letters is a training program with a remarkable track record, we don't know that, at improving reading scores. Like states like Mississippi, oh my goodness, Mississippi, are outperforming Minnesota in reading score increases. Now that's a little tricky bit of language there. Reading score increases. If you're at the 26th percentile, and you increase up to the 30th percentile, well, that's a greater increase than if you're at the 80th percentile and you go to the 84th percentile. So comparing reading score increases is a bit of a boondoggle, isn't it? They're playing with language to try to sell their product. And Senator Chamberlain has bought into this. But according to Senator Chamberlain, this increase is part due to their use of letters. So Senator Chamberlain has isolated all the variables for this reading score increase. And he has come to the conclusion that letters is the variable that has, that has resulted in reading score increases, which is a silly thing anyway. His education bill, 30 million to provide all teachers with letters program training. And I'll show you in a minute why that is a silly, silly thing. $30 million. Think what could be, what could be, what that $30 million could be used to provide. Smaller class sizes, more books, breakfast for kids. He wants to set up regional centers of excellence staffed with specialists to provide support all right he wants people who are letters certified reading professionals these are for-profit certified reading professionals and literacy specialists well let's take a look here literacy experts the state of minnesota pays me and other literacy professors to be experts. We're paid to be curious, to be knowledgeable. I spent 30 years reading research and scholarly works on how best to teach reading. And at each of these state universities, you, the taxpayers of Minnesota, are paying the salaries of these literacy professors 
and these, and there are several literacy professors at each institution, and you are paying our salary. You are paying us to be literacy experts. That's all we do. We don't get profits for selling particular programs. Now, myself, I don't have the most impressive Vita, but I want to show you this as a point of fact why we do what we do. First of all, the University of Minnesota, great place, gave me a great education, and I am very grateful for this in literacy instruction. I was educated as a literacy instructor, and I've had a lot of experience there. Now, I've written several books, and each chapter of these books contains a synthesis of the latest peer-reviewed literature about that topic. So with each chapter I write, I have to go out and see what the research says about that. I have to synthesize it, and I have to explain it. So I become a mini-expert on that chapter. Same with articles, a synthesis of the latest peer-reviewed literature. This is why it is important for professors to write and publish. That's what you pay me to do, to be and become an expert in my area of expertise. I've written several books. There are people with more impressive vitas, but these are just some of mine over the years. And you can stop the video if you want, but you don't have to. And some more of my books, each one of these, for each chapter, I had to become a mini expert. I had to read, review, and synthesize the literature. I've written book chapters. And again, there are other people with more impressive vitas than mine, but just this is just an example. And journal articles, well, yes, I've written several, yep, yep, and I'm not here to brag about mine. Again, there's people with m much more impressive vitas than mine, but this is what the state of Minnesota pays me to do, to be and become an expert in my area. And some monographs, all right, you get the idea. Professional experience, yep, a lot of that, teaching, tutoring, being a professor. I was in the classroom for nine years, or seven years, I'm sorry. A lot of student teaching supervising, a lot of professional development types of workshops. So I've done a lot of stuff, had a lot of experience, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Senator Chamberlain, let's take a look at his experience, because after all, he must know more than all the literacy professors in the state of Minnesota why else would he be trying to push this for-profit boondoggle? Okay, there he is. Yep, yep, yep. Education, Finance, and Policy Committee. Okay. Well, his education, law enforcement, and accounting. Okay. Now, if I had an accounting issue, he would probably be one of the first people I would go to or something related to law enforcement because he's had some experience there, lots of training and tax kind of stuff. It's him who I would go to. Reading instruction, not so much. And the thing is, he was wrong in his, uh, in his comments and his conclusions. Now, he's quoting data. Data is different from research. Data can be, cannot be understood outside a context, and data has no context. There's no peer review to say, listen, that isn't right. Test scores are going down. Well, I have not seen any data to show that. And he has identified the variable. The variable has to be teacher training, says he and others, out of all the variables. Never mind poverty, lack of health care overcrowded classrooms, poor conditions, lack of books. He has identified the variable, this one variable, and if we just buy this shiny new expensive product, all our reading alleged problems would be solved. And data is different from research. You should, well, uh, he's an accountant. I don't know why he would know that. Now, <clears throat> these are uh, scores from the National Assessment of Educational Process, NAEP. That is a federal 
uh, uh, federal funded program. They use the same test year after year so you can look at uh, scores over time and they are able to compare year to year and state to state. <clears throat> now here is the national average of scores. <clears throat> These are grade four. And you can see since 2019, there's been kind of a steady increase. And it is natural to have increases and dips. That's called normal, natural fluctuation. Human beings are not standardized products. So to have a little dip here and get all excited, oh my gosh, Minnesota is failing. Well, that's inaccurate when you look at the long view. We're a little ahead of where we're at, uh, where we were at in 2019, and we had a dip here, absolutely, absolutely. But, and again, it's like this. Is it just a minor blip? And think about this, think about all the changes and all the variables from 2017 to 2019. Same with grade eight, 1998, okay. We're just a little below where we're at. Not this, not this thing to worry about, this decline in reading scores, all right? Statistically significant there, yep, from 2017 to 2019. And by the, by the way, this was the latest data that I could get. But we're right about where we were in 1998. Doesn't mean we shouldn't look to do better, but, <laughs> There's no data to show that buying this expensive for-profit program is going to work. They'll say it's research-based. Well, research to support little bits of it, but that does not mean the program as a whole is research-based. That does not say that having good, legitimate professional development is better or worse than this for-profit boondoggle. What about the Minnesota versus Mississippi? And again, he, he used that squirrely use of language, and that's saying it uh, positively. <clears throat> and who told him how to use that language, I wonder? Did he come up with that himself? Or was there some uh, uh, lobbyist who came up with that language for him? But again, using national data, which he uses the same test, to compare year to year and state to state, you see Minnesota and Mississippi, okay, we were above. 2017, a little rise, a little dip, but we're just a little above where we were. Mississippi has been below Minnesota, if that's a problem. Same with grade eight. Mississippi didn't have data on 12th graders. But this assertion that somehow Mississippi is beating us and that's, this should not be a competition, people. This should not be a competition. It's just blatantly wrong. Now, letters training claims that the experts say it puts the why behind the phonics system. And I'm quoting there. First of all, we don't train people. We educate them. And experts, you know, they use the word expert. Who are the expert? An expert in what? animal husbandry? Do they get expert badges? Do they go to expert school? Using experts, and they'll also say, oh yes, so-and-so a literacy expert, so-and-so a teacher and former parent says that. This is the best. That's what's called anecdotal evidence. It's powerful, but it is inaccurate, invalid, and unreliable. Say one person says this is good, therefore it must be good. That's anecdotal evidence. And again, if there is a dip in scores, and I don't know if there is from 2019 to 2023, 22, I'm sorry, think about all the variables. We have this thing called a pandemic where children had to learn at home. We've had a bit of racial strife, wouldn't you say? We have overcrowded classrooms, underfunded schools, underpaid teachers, lack of teachers of color. These are all variables that impact education. And you think by teacher-proofing the curriculum and insisting 
that all teachers take this for-profit boondoggle, that you're going to fix a problem that really doesn't exist in the first place? Shame on you, Senator. Shame on you. And again, it's natural to have a fluctuation in scores, absolutely, from 73 to 12. This is natural. It's normal. We're generally trending upward. All right? What you will see, and we look for things that are statistically significant. That's important. That's a difference or change that, that is greater than what could happen by chance. So just a difference in scores isn't important, but statistically significant difference, that means that difference is more than could be accounted for by chance. And the only real statistically significant difference or increase you'll see is the increase in profit for the Lexia letters boondoggle for profit entities. That's what you will see. Now, some people say it is great. It is absolutely great. Again, it's anecdotal evidence. But if you're currently using an inadequate approach to reading instruction, it's a skills-based, bottom-up type of instruction. Well, letters will certainly help you better understand an inadequate approach to reading and apply this inadequate approach. But the approach that letters takes, and Dr. Elizabeth Motes is behind this, it's based, by a very, based on a very narrow range of research. It's not widely supported in the literacy community. In the for-profit community, I'm sure people love it because they're able to make money. And administrators are able to point to something and say, there it is. That's it. That's good. Letters is based, and it's a professional development, based on a very simple and inaccurate view of reading, the bottom-up or phonological process processing model. It's a simple view of reading that says reading is merely sounding out words. So we need to give sounding out word instruction. And then we'll have better sounder outers. And that's what letters essentially is. Sounding out word instruction based on this thing called orthographic mapping. And that's not quite right. Involves the formation of letter sound connections to bond spellings, pronunciations, and meaning of specific words in memory. Okay, bond, that's a, uh, a behaviorist term, associate one to the other. Spelling has very little to do with reading. It has to do with storage in visual memory. It explains how children learn to read words by sight, to spell words from memory, and no, it doesn't do any of that stuff, no matter what fancy charts you use, what limited research you look at. Words are not stored based on letter patterns. Words are stored in long-term memory based on reading. If I say red, you don't instantly associate with short E words. You associate with all these things that are read. That's semantically based on meaning. Same with dog. You associate with dog things, not words that start with D, semantically. The neurocognitive view of reading is more complex to understand. Here, reading is creating meaning with print. The brain creates meaning. It's not sounding out words. It's not matching words on the page with words stored in long-term memory. And there's a two-way flow of information from the cortex down and then from the thalamus up. And neurocognitive imaging has showed this downward flow of information. And we don't just use sounding out words, the phonological processing system, to recognize words while we are reading. We use all three, syntax and semantics. Why are we supporting these for-profit entities? Why are we using taxpayer money to support for-profit entities when we are paying literacy experts in our own state of Minnesota? Why are we, we relying on paid consultants instead of real literacy experts? We deserve better than that, Senator Chamberlain and those others. 
those school districts who are paying taxpayers money for this letters professional development program.